podcast about whatever Allison wants us to talk about. Um, I'm Gary. To my one side is uh, my co-host, uh, Clorox Wipe Sales Extraordinaire. Wow, that was a great hand gesture to do as you're saying Clorox Wipe Salesman. <laughs> I mean, it, it bodes well for your future career washing windshields. It in does. New York City, right? Yes. Um, and our, um, I feel like if Chris and I are hosts and Allison needs to be like, what, what's the, uh, who's the guy on uh, Jeopardy, the announcer, but you're not the announcer. Our top topic, topic, topic creator. Our head writer. Chief writer. Yeah. 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 Chief writer. Um, Chief of staff. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Before we hit record, I said, maybe we'll crash and burn on the introductions. And I think we did a good job. <laughs> Probably time to uh, explain. This is episode 100, right? So counting by binary is definitely the way to go if you want to get to 100 quick. <laughs> um, big fan of that. Um, if you're new, um, there's very little continuity. There are silly inside jokes that aren't that important, but you should listen to the first um, 11 episodes. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> um, this, this podcast is, uh, is simple. Allison picks a topic that Chris and I uh, are aware of as soon as she tells us what it is, and we talk about it until uh, we run out of time and close with some interesting questions. That's about it. Cool, let's go. Okay. The topic for today, so it's an acronym, uh -oh. ASMR, -AS which I've pronounced asthma, <laughs> but I don't actually know that to be true or false. <laughs> I'm gonna open um, text me and write no, no. ASMR because I will forget like the order oh. Okay, yeah. ASMR. Uh, as soon as mother returns. <laughs> um, let's that see. That's so formal. Yeah. Mother. mother. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you're Mike Pence, then you refer to your wife as mother. Association of <laughs> Southern Mississippi Radiologists. Uh, <laughs> Mississippi. <laughs> um, after. Sunset, moon rises. Arbitrary <laughs> static method returns. <laughs> it's actually a haiku. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Jeez. ASMR. I can give you the first word. No, I think we should go on. I think we should do this for about twenty more minutes. <laughs> yeah, and there's science involved again this week. Oh, science! It's science, okay. Uh, Asperger's students meet regularly. <laughs> I think the second word has to be science. That's uh, uh, appropriated science, math, and uh, reconnaissance. What would appropriated science be? Um, like, <laughs> that's science. when you steal science from other people. <laughs> You've taken over their science. You've taken over their science, yes. It's like, I'm a biologist, but I'm going to appropriate your, your paleontology. <laughs> For my own use. <laughs> For my own biological use. So yeah. diabolical. Like <laughs> people's subject matter. Exactly. I think I need, uh, yeah, we could make stuff up forever, but I think I need some context because now I'm really curious, right? So is, it like a group? is it an assembly or an association or is it, is it a industry specific acronym? Is it um, Everything fish? is an industry specific acronym. <laughs> it's an industry specific acronym. Ooh, what, what industry? Is it's, it's a term for something. So it's not like a group or a conference or anything like that. Okay. <laughs> what, can we ask what industry? Um, you can ask. <laughs> I don't actually know. I, I, I don't know if this is industry. I think it's human specific. Big industry. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a big industry. It's, 
it's it's specific to the human body. Oh, is it like a part of a human body? Like, oh yeah, I broke my ASMR last week. <laughs> that damn ASMR. Um, no, kind of. <laughs> Huh. Because there's lots of there's lots of weird acronism uh, acronisms. <laughs> that's like that's when you combine an acronym and an anachronism, it becomes an acronism. Um, there's lots of acronyms for various uh, ligaments and things. You know, if you, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. ACL, LCL. Yeah. No, it's not. It's it's PBC. not like actual thing that you can necessarily point to. <laughs> it's my ASMR, ASMR right there. Yeah, you can't be like, oh. Don't show that on camera. <laughs> and we're all pointing. For Family it. show. Not watching. <laughs> Is the word medial in there somewhere? No. Probably on the M? No? Okay. Yes, it stands for medial. <laughs> I really like the guessing part of this. Um, I also I enjoy know. how befuddled you get when you can't when you don't know it yet gary oh man i know it's maddening <laughs> a ordal is for us to talk about it i don't know what it is and that's been every episode so far a ordal like? <laughs> uh scenic no wait we said it was science. senile senile <laughs> a ordal senile mm -hmm. medical like sure. wait no wait our record yeah ligament with an r it's yeah. a silent R. <laughs> Can I give you what the S or the R is, maybe? Are, will they be, I mean, I mean yeah, unless it's not, there's new. still three other letters. It's not like, yeah, okay. Feel yeah, the deal. sure. Pick one. Um, so S is sensory. Sensory. Okay. So um, A sensory MR. Hmm. We can automatic see sensory. Don't, don't try to hide it. No, no, I was typing the word sensory into TextMate, so I didn't get the uh, acronym confused. Yeah. Automatic sensory memory is this, recognition. Is this related to like when you get sick to your stomach while reading in the car? No. Okay. Oh, well, I, I don't think it's supposed to be, I guess. <laughs> if, you're like, if you're reading about it, it certainly is. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I really, uh, to be honest, automatic uh, memory, this, automatic ASMR, automatic sensory memory. It, yeah, is record. the M for memory? No, nothing oh, to do with them. Damn. How about how about another letter? <laughs> <laughs> um, so A is autonomous. Oh, I was close. Yeah. Now we've kind of, instead of balderdash, this is more like, um, more like Wheel of Fortune at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have an E, please? <laughs> is there you know, an I, R? I still give you what it stands for, and I don't actually know if that would clear anything up. <laughs> oh, great. Let's do it then. <laughs> yeah, okay. I could autonomous, spend yeah. autonomous sensory mechanical I don't know I fault hurt there yeah <laughs> okay so ASMR mm -hmm. stands for autonomous sensory meridian response meridian mm -hmm. autonomous sensory meridian response <sighs> is that like is this just balance just, just balance just, just. balance, like balance right? <laughs> Um, no, no, it's okay. not just balance. But thank you for playing. That was an excellent. <laughs> that was an excellent episode one hundred in the can. <laughs> Don't discount balance. I feel like. I mean, I didn't. Yeah, I, I didn't mean like just balance. I, I appreciate balance. Very, very I, core feature of the human body. I I, in life in general, I, I really, I really step in it a lot. <laughs> just balance. Just balance. <clears throat> Okay, it's already autonomous sensory meridian. 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 And what's the R? Response. Response, right? Response. Uh, that that should have been that should have been easy to guess, given. Well, really? Yeah. 
Yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, you know, it's it, it's one of those things that's always in medical acronyms. Sensory For some reason, response. I, I I thought I would bring this to the table, and you would both know. I no. don't know why. I have no idea why. There's your, no your opinion of us is way people. higher than it needs to be. <laughs> I I think because it's like. Uh, no, it's, I think it's just because it's a an interesting sub niche that I think has popped up in general, and I feel like since we all spend m maybe perhaps more than the average civilian on the internet, that we would have come across it. I think is why. Yeah, but maybe although, it's just me. Maybe, maybe I've just gone. Off okay, the so has been um, autonomous like sensory like meridian uh, autonomous sensory meridian response is the perception of an artificial horizon oh. it's when you look off in the distance and you think you see the horizon or you look at a picture and, you, and it shows the horizon and you think that goes on forever but in fact it's a two-dimensional photograph i think this is this is when you're like laying in bed with <laughs> nailed it <laughs> i want that i need to now know the word for that phenomenon <laughs> this is not it <laughs> <laughs> because but it's like autonomous it. and it's sensory because you have the perception of it being the actual horizon and it's the meridian because it's the meridian and it's your response to that meridian. <laughs> perfect. What a gorgeous sunset. <laughs> exactly. When, when you feel like you're falling when you're like going, falling asleep, right? So like the meridian response is like, oh my gosh, the ground is moving underneath me. But it didn't because you're laying in bed, right? No. What's it called? Hard. What's it called when you feel like you're falling and you wake up and you fall on the floor? Ouch. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> What's that response? Do do either of you sleepwalk? No. I used not to. I mean, I, I mean, not since I was like, I don't know, thirteen. Oh, I I I sleep walk sleep walk sleep well walk while sleeping um i mean it, well into college i mean in, in in college i hopped up out of bed and wandered off and would speak in my sleep and everything so wow yeah did you ever like fall downstairs or anything no i once walked out the front door of my house in high school in just my underpants yelling one of my friend's names um, my I, family, what the hell are you doing i almost did that what am i doing yeah the, the last memory I have of me sleepwalking was, was me getting out of bed, walking to the front door and opening the door and then standing there as the cold air is, is hitting me. And my dad happened to be on the couch because he fell asleep watching TV. And he looks up at me and he wakes up like in a sleepy voice. He's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, that's the worst part about it. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, and I had uh, my roommate in college, my first roommate in college, um, slept. He didn't sleep walk, but he slept talk. And it would, it was actually occasionally, I mean, it was, it was kind of aggravating, but it was also kind of funny because he would talk really loudly and it was complete gibberish. It was like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, what are you doing, dude? Bah, 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 bah. It definitely goes against the like idea of like kind of mumbling in your sleep. Yeah, it like, wasn't mumbling. It was like yelling. <laughs> really is therapy probably like yeah. mike Birbiglia has great uh, some great stuff on storytelling on his sleepwalking um which he was diagnosed with something but he essentially now has to i think sleep in like one of those like sleeping bags with like mitts and things um because otherwise he gets yeah he has a story about being in walla walla washington and at a motel and being on the second floor it's quite it's a great storyteller. <clears throat> ASMR. <laughs> I, I mean, I know what it stands for, and I still don't know what it stands for. I can expand more. The meridian is totally throwing me. I don't know if it like, should be as much. It's, is it like because it's too sciencey sounding? I don't know. I think these these words in and of themselves mean something individually. <laughs> but put together in this way. <laughs> I, wiser words. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's meridian, a meridian, a, a circle of constant lo longitude passing through a given place on the Earth's surface and the terrestrial poles. So a sensory. So the meridian. middle of the thing. Yeah. So, so the sensory. autonomous sensory meridian response is your perception of the middle. 
Hmm. Like, I'm on board. this is the middle of this cup. <laughs> this is the middle of this mouse. <laughs> I am perceiving the middle of a thing, the meridian of the thing that I'm holding. Yeah, but response, Maybe it's right? the perception response, of my middle. My middle is but, right here. <laughs> but response indicates like some kind of an autonomous, right? The bookend words in this indicate some kind of thing your body does without your logic, right? Because we know it's body related, right? Without your like logical thought process, correct? No? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Wait. Oh. <laughs> is it? So is it, does it, is it your sense of direction? No. Damn. Because <laughs> that would be really no, cool if like, it was. I like the idea of the sunset and horizon. I wish that was it now. <laughs> all right. All right. I give up. I give up. I, I want to actually talk about what it is, but I need to know what it is first. <laughs> <laughs> relating to, it's a, it can also, okay, meridian can also be an adjective. Mm. Relating to or situated at a meridian. That doesn't help. Well, <laughs> middle response, it does. It means middle response. I don't like when definitions refer middle response. <laughs> yeah. The actual word in the definition. I yeah. think that's a cop out. It is a cop Except out. Except for the, the word recursion. That's like the only position only possible word that using the word in the definition makes sense. Okay. It makes sense. The second definition for Meridian, according to Googling Meridian. Uh, is in acupuncture and sign in Chinese medicine it says each set of pathways in the body along which vital energy is said to flow key if you I will knew. yeah I think I knew there are 12 that. such pathways associated with specific organs so the meridian of the, the odd do you, you get poked with the needle and your autonomous sensory meridian response reacts to the needle poking you in the meridian <laughs> I'm gonna poke you in the meridian. <laughs> I feel like that definition is slightly woo-woo enough and a bit more aligned with ASMR in general. Yeah, that's kind of why I like it. Um, because I felt <laughs> like going into the Chinese Eastern medicine thing was, was, was different enough from what we were trying to come up with. <laughs> Yeah, it's also my tagline is Allison, just woo woo enough. <laughs> <laughs> that should be your that should go on your Twitter profile after this show. It should just woo woo just enough. Just the right amount. <laughs> um, okay, so I can describe. Yeah, we ready? Sure, yeah. yeah. I think we're I think I think we're at that time. I think Gary's reaching his meridian level of frustration. <laughs> the middle. <laughs> Things have come to a middle. Um, so it's a term used for when your body responds with like a tingling or static um, sensation. Um, it has, it's kind of a sub niche of, I would say, video and audio provided out there on the internet of um, it's commonly triggered by specific like acoustic or visual stimuli um, and it causes like a tingle like up your spine generally. Oh! Um, right? Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, and it's very calming. Um, there's like a whole community of people creating these videos and audio cues for other people based on like crinkling things very quietly or like the sound of a pen on paper or um there's lots of like unwrapping or whispering is a very common one yeah. um and yeah people use it for calming purposes to fall asleep uh, uh. So there's, yeah, always was... physical, there's like always a physical manifestation of this or sometimes it's yeah. just a, well that's a, what it is that's yeah. that's well, yeah but I mean, it could be like a phantom feel, right? Like I didn't really happen, but is there a physical manifestation or does it feel as though there was a physical manifestation? I don't know, is don't there a know. difference? Yeah. I mean, if you think you felt it, then did, did you not feel it? If a tree falls in the forest, nobody did it, hear it, does it actually fall? I mean, like. Well, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is like, if it feels like, let's say it feels like, um, like coming up my back, like, you know, like muscles, like, you know, is there an observable like pattern of muscle contraction or, or is it just a thing that like happens in your brain that feels like it's happening? In yeah. Your right. That's and a I good mean, question. I, I don't think it's a measurable thing that can be yeah. monitored. I think it's, it's your sensory perception of it. I think. Yeah. I, I think that, cause I read an article recently that was talking about uh, people 
who there are people who listen to music and um, certain types. Well, obviously, there's lots of people that listen to music. People, there are some people who, when they listen to music, um, there the sensation of shivers up your spine. That occurs more in like this group of people over here than the rest of the population. It's like high intelligence people are more likely to uh, feel have that response to music than the rest of the world or, or really, or I don't even remember what the group, what the subgroup was, but there's like, you know, this group of people over here that have that experience and other people don't. And which would, which also ties into the ASMR. Um, and actually now that I probably would not have, I, I do know of the phenomenon of uh, people recording videos to stimulate that kind of response i am aware of that that does not that is not a new concept i heard about it at some point and then promptly forgot as as with most endeavors on the internet yes yes oh that's a thing that exists yeah it's a thing <laughs> is it is it like is it like shivers or chills i mean would you equate it to that same feeling or yeah I mean, I mean not shivers I'm, like when you're ill, but like shivers like, ooh, yeah. that was spooky, and there's no yeah. manifestation. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Right. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So now that we know what it is, <laughs> go on. <laughs> it's a thing. Uh, it is a thing. Yeah. Um, do you, Gary, ha I mean, that's definitely something that I can uh, relate to. In fact, I was getting like tinglys when you were talking about it. <laughs> right? I the same thing. I'm like, Whoa. okay, good. I'm not, I'm not weird. And I wonder, like, like that can't be, I mean, that can't be like a normal thing, right? The first time you, you, you logically observe it, you're like, oh, but then it's got to be like, you know, I don't know. Um, anything else you've been exposed to, like the more you're exposed to it, the, the less intense it is right so that's why you would record videos or look for videos right, right, right. now i'm like yeah. my brain is on this like tangent of like what about people who like get addicted to that like sensation I, and like i went to the same place right yeah, like, so that's just, really like, weird. Like, like like as part of this like you're like you're releasing endorphins or whatever right or, or you know and you're feeling really good and is that i mean are you is it it's like you know body created high that you want more of I mean, I don't see why, I mean, I don't, I, it's, probably that's not the, like, I don't know. <laughs> have, have there been, has there been any science on this, I wonder, that, that, you know, there's a point where people go, yeah, I mean, there's like measurable differences in brain chemistry during and or after. Oh, that would be a fascinating thing to Google. We really need a scientist on this show. I feel like every- <laughs> We really need someone who knows what they're talking about. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to- That would that defeat far. the purpose of the entire show. I just want a scientist to be like, that sounds yes. like complete BS. Or a scientist to be like, I don't see why that couldn't be a thing, right? I mean- Okay, I, I will record or find recordings of a scientist and then I will inject them into the conversation at times. Yes. Yeah, but I think like the coming. scientist has to be like whispering so they trigger ASMR. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what would be cool too is that we'll have we'll all have this mental image of the scientist. It's completely different. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm thinking lab coat. Real okay. Well, we can well, all just show up wearing lab coats. That's yeah, not. that's true. I mean, or we can get somebody on on uh, Fiverr to to wear a lab coat and show up on their show and pretend to be a scientist. And that wouldn't even be like an abnormal gig on Fiverr. No, it wouldn't be. be. Uh, I gotta go be a scientist on this podcast, but then we end up coffee. Like, <laughs> what? Man, that 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 gets my goat. Like, I was reading an article today on the internet, probably. I don't know where else I read an article. I mean, <laughs> where else do articles exist? Um, yeah, I was reading this article on the internet um, talking about like, you know, the, the gig economy. And I don't remember what year it was. I, it wasn't, it didn't seem that far into the future where there was concern that we would be, you know, 50% plus employed in the gig economy. And I'm, that's a bit alarming to me, you know? I worry about that. Why? I think generally the gig economy 
thus far has been um, a way for a lot of large corporations to circumvent, you know, like standard policies and laws that are in place to keep people safe. You know, I think it circumvents all that. I, I think that there's a certain percentage of the population who do not work well with traditional jobs and would actively choose that uh, type of work. And I also think that there is a different group of people who would prefer to not work within those, within that, uh, that environment and would prefer something more stable and with the 401k and, you know, we clock in at a certain time or whatever. Absolutely. But in the circumstances where, where the gig economy is replacing like existing, uh, let's talk Uber like and Uber Lyft. and taxis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, in that case, you know, they're, they're circumventing regulations that in some cases are, are, you know, maybe heavy handed, but, but are in the interest of public safety. And then there's these folks are driving for, you know, ultimately when they do their taxes, realize they're driving for, you know, less than minimum wage and barely breaking even. And it looks really good on paper, but when, when all the dust settles, it's not a, not a great situation. Those, that's what I worry about. I, I used to say too. So when I, when I was Uber and taxi, I mean, that Uber is going to become all robot driven anyway. So, right. Right. And so then, and so then someone has to clean the cars, right? So get yes. economy cleaning robot cars, apparently. I don't know. Um, so when I, when <laughs> Gotta I get the vomit off the floor, oh. I, you know, at some point they self sterilize, right? They just like roll themselves over and dump out and then hose themselves down. Um, when I was doing the e-commerce thing, we used to say all the time um, that eBay was great because it was a place for people that were functionally unemployable to make a living. We, like, we would sell stuff to people that were selling it on eBay. And, the, and these were some very um, interesting and bizarre people. But, but eBay was their channel and their way to, to, you know, to, uh, to make a living, eke something out, um, as weird as they were. Wait, what yeah. was the term you used? Functionally unemployable? Functionally unemployable, yeah. Hashtag functionally unemployable. Yeah, I really, I, that really captures my imagination in a big way. I don't know why. <laughs> I mean, and I say that for like a lot of reasons. Like, you know, they have social interaction issues or they, they are confined to the house. I feel or, like I should just have like a big neon sign near me. Like, <laughs> <functionally>. <laughs> um, I'm yeah, unemployable but then, by myself. <laughs> But then as, then, then as like e-commerce has grown up and Amazon became Amazon and, and you know, um, like took over the world over the last decade online, decade and a half, um, you know, the, the, the eBay marketplace has shifted dramatically um, and those folks are still selling there and, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. But Amazon doesn't really fit that kind of seller, you know, you can't be quirky. <laughs> quirky. I, I, speaking of the gig economy, which is completely tangential to uh, autonomous sensory meeting response, uh, I know someone who has recently got a gig doing, um, you know how there's like secret shoppers? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, she is at Audio least podcast. occasionally, <laughs> she is at least occasionally a secret apartment shopper. Oh, nice. So Ooh. she goes to apartments and pretends to be somebody who wants to rent the apartment and then grades the agent or whatever representative on how well they show the place, if they answer their, their questions, how they greet her, et cetera. Um, and I didn't even know that this thing existed, although like after hearing it, of course it exists because it's a thing that somebody could think of. So of course it exists. Anything that somebody could think of is something that exists. Um, and she really enjoyed doing it because it means like you get paid a hundred bucks for like an hour worth of work and then she can do whatever, you know, the rest of her day. And like, you know, she just, all she needs to do is go in with her, you know, she takes her kids along. She's like, yeah, we're looking at this apartment and you know, yeah. Now, in, in pretending to be an applicant, is she pretending to be a good applicant? Or does she get to, like, make up a backstory where, like, oh, like, maybe I didn't pay rent at my last place, always on time, and, like, my credit's bad, or, like, I don't know. Like, how many iguanas do you allow? Yeah. <laughs> like, is, do, store, they throw, okay. do they throw things to, like, the realtor representative that might throw them for a loop, but if they handle it, like, really, like, extra professional, like, bonus points? 
So, so normally I would say I have no idea, but since this is Binary Jazz, which is the podcast version of Balderdash, I'm going to say yes, she absolutely makes up entire backstories uh, and often will just invent new occupations. Uh, like, what's your previous employer? Oh, yeah, I work for uh, an underwater basket weaving company. Uh, <laughs> Yes, it's it's a, it's a little bit difficult to find work in Utah because there's not a lot of I mean there's you know limited bodies of water but you know when we when we moved up to Jacksonville a little over a decade ago um, we were in an apartment initially and the, one of the places we went to um, the the apartment manager was showing us this place and we walk in and it was like it was the show apartment um, but there was this bathroom that was entirely done up in like Elvis um, but <laughs> non functional so like the sink was full of pom poms. And there was like, like party Elvis, like silhouettes on the wall, like holding the microphone and everything. What is this um, magical place? <laughs> oh, it, was, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't magical. It was weird. Because the rest of the apartment was like, you know, the empty apartment you expect to see when you see an apartment you're going to rent. You know, like nothing abnormal. And I opened the bathroom and walked in. Whoa. Like, <laughs> what? like first it was a silhouette. I thought there was a person with a microphone in there. And then I put the light on. And, and it's like hot pink and black. And then these crazy pom-poms. And... And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it yeah, wasn't a functional. There. It wasn't a functional bathroom. Um, I mean, the toilet worked, but what if we going to wash my hands in pom poms? I don't understand. Like it was, it was very bizarre. We did rent there though, not the Elvis suite, but elsewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was a, it was, a, it was not a great area of town, and so there's many more stories about that. I, but, I guess know, that but, explains why Elvis. I, yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't put much thought into it. I was just reminded of as we were talking about apartments. Why now not? I'm, thinking, I'm away there tonight and wonder why. Like, what was the purpose of Elvis? So, hey, we're. Um, <laughs> That's a silly question. <laughs> no, I'm not, not the, next week's topic. <laughs> why not Elvis? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean in that bathroom. Like, why was, why was that bathroom an homage to Elvis? I don't. What? We, we, <laughs> what could, what well, I'm reaching. I'm trying to reach the part of the show where we answer questions, but I can't quite get there. <laughs> <laughs> we have a segment well, where we answer questions, and we, we actually and you can submit your questions on our website at binaryjazz.us. There's a form there that submits questions to us, and if it doesn't get filtered as spam, we'll actually see them. Uh, we did, in fact, have a question submitted to us, which we'll read first, and then we have a couple other questions that I'm sure that uh, Allison will either conjure up right now or uh, ask us if we have remaining time. So the question that we uh, have, Robin asks us, who would win in a no weapons melee Abraham Lincoln or Paul McCartney, and I, I think I feel like this. I feel like this uh, refers back to uh, our first episode <laughs> when we were talking about uh, the second best or second favorite Beatle, uh, which then in the in the podcast notes in the description I said the worst Beatle. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, no, I mean I did it intentionally. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> because I was talking about Paul McCartney. Because <laughs> you have strong feelings. Yes, I have strong feelings about Paul. <laughs> I would, I would, no, no hesitation. Abraham Lincoln would, would hands down uh, annihilate Paul McCartney. Yeah, I, I got to go with Abe Lincoln on this one too. I think that he just, you know, I think. I mean, he's like Paul twelve feet tall, right? right? Like Lincoln. <laughs> you know, I mean, right? I don't know. I mean, I feel yeah. like extra gangly limbs, like pretty scrappy. He's seen some things. Yeah, oh, and and and, and reach too, right? I mean, it's like boxers. Like they. I was like, gonna say, well, he was yeah. a boxer, right? Was right. I don't know, but yeah, but I don't hmm. know. And Paul McCartney's like peaceful. He probably yeah. wouldn't even fight. <laughs> <laughs> you just get, I mean, you could just get his face bashed in. It would be like that scene Lincoln in Fight Club. I wanted to destroy work. something beautiful. <laughs> Jared Leto. So I can say, I fought a zombie president. Why are zombies in every episode? Again, Is why not? Next question? No. Uh, next question. Pineapple and pizza or raisins and cookies? Or both? Option C. I don't have strong feelings about either of those things. Um, yeah. I I know that there are people who do have strong feelings about pineapples on pizza and raisins in cookies. And I used to have strong feelings about raisins and cookies, but like then I grew up 
And yeah, I, I, I like oatmeal cookies. So if they have raisins in them, then I'm not going to like throw them in the trash. Um, and yeah. I grew up with, you know, Hawaiian quote, Hawaiian pizzas with pineapple and ham on it. And I don't have a problem with that. So I'm pro both. Um, I think, I think the pineapple is a nice little, you know, blast of flavor, even when it's dried out in a piece of you know, crummy pizza. Um, and I mean, cookies, like, come on. Yeah, I pretty much eat any cookie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not. on board with that statement. <laughs> yeah. I have a pineapple story, though. So in the, in my, in the days when I was a, um, a, a small appliance salesman, I used to do a lot of trade shows, and we, would, um, we always had a food dehydrator out. And so whatever city we were in, we would go buy a fresh pineapple and core it and cut it and throw it in there because it smelled fantastic. So everybody walking by wanted to stop and talk to you. Um, and it didn't matter how dehydrated the pineapple was. Like at any point after it had been in there for an hour, like if it was still just juicy and warm to like when it was like, you know, really fully dehydrated. Everybody was always like, oh, that's the best way to prepare it. So we sold so many <laughs> silly dehydrators off of like, oh, you only have to leave it. We've only had this out for three hours today. And this is the best way to prepare pineapple. And it didn't matter how long it was. It was three hours, four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours. <laughs> All day long was the best amount of time to prepare pineapple. You were a snake oil salesman, but I'm hearing from this story. <laughs> when you're selling kitchen, small kitchen appliances, like no one, no one cares. It doesn't look good. And can I make a lot of money on it? The buy, people were buying it from us. Like we were a distributor. We weren't selling it to the customer. We were selling like buy a case of eight and put it in your shop. Right. And no one cares about the customer at that level. They just, they just want product. I'm serious. That'll be a topic for another time. I, I like this segment because I feel like we always end on a real note of optimism. <laughs> I hope the next question's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, a good segue, perhaps, from pineapple. What do you think the most dangerous fruit is? Mm. Uh, well, coconut, because there's somewhere there are no. statistics that people are killed by coconut every year. Well, but if you got hit in the head with a dragon fruit, you'd be in much more pain than a coconut. <laughs> I want, you know, maybe it's a reason thing. Yeah. Maybe if we, maybe if I Googled it um, elsewhere, I would know how many people are killed by dragon fruit. Versus <laughs> probably probably well, not, like, probably not as many as coconut because yeah, coconut falls from a much higher distance. I would, yeah, I mean, I guess functionally uh, coconut is probably the most accurate response, but like dangerous, like, I don't know, like I want to, I want to, I want that to be like, looks like a military weapon. <laughs> so that's where the dragon fruit comes in. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if there's a fruit people can't, like consistently choke on. That's not very optimistic. No. We can't that. We can't. no. <laughs> it's I not didn't, I didn't think these questions through clearly. It's but I don't think I can. I think yeah. you'll outsmart me at every turn and make it. <laughs> You've seen the XKCD where they talk about like the radiation level of, in bananas, right? Using bananas as a measurement of radiation exposure. I it's, feel like, Allison, we've had this conversation. Have we not about radiation in bananas? We, we have, <laughs> but it's because they found that uh, scorpion in that bag of bananas in Canada and um, that's right yeah it's probably on Twitter somewhere yeah, yeah. Um, okay next question favorite two Spice Girls <laughs> two Spice Girls is a question got it okay <laughs> list your favorite two ginger Spice and girls. posh um all in it's five. also a quiz on if you know any of the Spice Girls. Uh, Ginger, yeah, Posh, Posh, Sporty. Uh, you can't copy Posh. Chris's answer, Gary. And okay, uh, the other two. <laughs> the black one and the other one. All Spice and Five Spice. <laughs> on that note, episode 101 next uh, two weeks, something like that? Yes. Time is relative. Yes, time is relative. I know, and we're getting this countdown clock again, and it freaks me out every week. I don't know if you can visibly tell I panic when it gets there. <laughs> it's, I, I don't want it. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the form on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.